and all the club competition awards. They're over there alphabetized. So be sure you grab them. And that's about it. Okay. Um, let's see. We're going to get started with some announcements of mine, and then I'll hand it over to Jill and our judge. So, so I have a note in here about next presentation on the 19th and I have here thanking Willie Gorham for his help with the technical problems we've had with hybrid meetings. We've also had technical problems with this kind of meeting and it's working wonderfully. So thank you, Willie. Um, on the 19th, uh, Don Trednick's going to be talking about flower photography. That will be a hybrid meeting um, with people here and people connecting by Zoom. I'm guessing so far that Don's going to be uh, not in the room, but will be connecting by Zoom also, but I haven't heard from him for sure. Um, May 3 is Michael Hoover in the club presenting on drone photography. That's going to be outside. So, um, <laughs> good question. Um, and then May 24th is Arthur Anderson about uh, Badlands Adventure. That'll be in-person only. And then I just wanted to note that in the middle of the summer, the Phipps has an arts camp from June 12th to August 21, and this room is not available. So the presentations then will be Zoom only or in person only. The scavenger hunt is outside, so not an issue. Uh, and then the last is to remind people that the deadline for the N4C April contest is the 10th. My usual categories, but because we judged black and white last time, um, we can submit two black and white images because we couldn't submit black and white images last time. Steve? Yo. Because we're judging travel in May for last month, we can also double entry travel this month. Oh, okay. Double entry travel and black and white. Okay, we can double enter travel as well. Um, that's it for me. So I'm gonna turn this over. Give you the mic. Okay. We're, we're, we're not. I just stopped sharing. I pull up my... uh... You're another host. Okay. It worked. All right. Well, welcome to our April salon, everybody. I'd like to thank Bob Lundquist, our judge, and I'll do a little brief bio, and then he's going to go over his 10 key points of photo taking. For many years, Bob's been photo photographing a wide range of primarily outdoor subjects. In 2002, Lundquist Natural Images was established under the direction of his wife, Ruth, to share his award-winning images. Since 2008, special focus has been given to equine photography of all types. This includes show competitions, on-site portraits, and horses in natural settings. We are proud to say then, oh, he's proud to say, <laughs> in the 25, in the first, oh, bah, oh, sorry, you have to edit that, Steve. In, a, in the first 15 years of this special work, they've captured and displayed over 400,000 images of horses and their riders. 
Much of Bob's work can be viewed at his website, www.lnifoto.com. Also, images from recent shoots are frequently shown on Facebook at Lundquist Natural Images and Robert Lundquist. Bob is certified for photo contest judging by the Twin Cities Camera Council and is judging the Western Wisconsin Photography Club for the fourth time. Thank you, Bob. So oh, talk into this, huh? All right. Talk into it. Oh, get a sense of all of it. Close it has to be as we go here. All right, let's see. Uh, let me try it without this and see. No, again. we we need it for oh, you need the it. recording. Oh, okay. so. All right. All right, let me get my stuff together here. Um, as you can see, I've been around your club in the past. And I uh, appreciate the invitation again. I'll try to compete with the, what are they, dancers up there? Or what are they doing up there? They got a termite problem and they couldn't have heard it. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's pretty amazing. Okay, well, let, let me just uh, take a quick start with uh, things I put together, just as a reminder of uh, what I think are keys to uh, the the idea of creating good images and hence what I should do as a, as a judge. Uh, we're not going to take a long time going through these, but I will say that as I go through, I will be coming back to, to my comments, some of the things you might see here. The first two there obviously it just have to do with your camera. Uh, not everybody knows how to use their camera. Learn everything you can about it. Get, a, get a, an additional book on your camera if one's available. Uh, and then accessories. Uh, I had a friend by the name of John Shaw, who many of you may have seen or heard before. He, he likes to call all that everything you have in your bag. He calls it lens lust. That you always buy the next best thing. But uh, anyway, um, the point of interest. Point of interest is always something that I'm looking for on, on any image. It may or may not be there, it may or may not be good, but that's something that I'm going to look for. Okay. There's, there's other things that uh, I'm always looking for. For example, like what I call the decisive moment. The decisive moment could be in two parts. One, and I'm an action photographer, it's getting that image at exactly the right moment when it's really dramatic, or if it's just about something, anything in general, what's the lighting? Did you capture the best possible lighting on your image? Composition guidelines. There's a there's some examples there. That's a very long list. Most of you have seen that in the past, and those are important items when you're trying to create a good image. Uh, sharpness. Sharpness is critical. Now, sometimes. Softness is what you're going to use. That's fine, but when I'm looking at it as a, as a judge, it better be obviously intentional. Otherwise, it's going to look like it was unintentionally soft, which is not good for your number of points you're going to get. Okay. And the last three there, uh, what's, what style do you like to shoot it? You just shoot in color. Or maybe monochrome. If you're going to do monochrome, you can just routinely do black and white, or you do some other things like sepia, for example. Um, infrared has gotten to be a little bit more popular than in the past. I've seen a certain amount of that in uh, the last few years. Title of the image. Title of the image isn't supposed to be important, but in fact, it can at least be a little bit of a guide to me about how I'm supposed to look at that picture, at least how the maker wants me to. And then of course the story, the st it's all about the story in the picture. If you've got a good story in your picture, you probably got a good picture. Um, then all these things that you tried to do and capture and did capture in the, in the camera, there's, there's, post, there's always post-processing to try and enhance it or make up for something or change things around. So a lot of work can go into a, a good picture. Then of course, when you get to the prints, we have a few prints here. The printing and the matting and maybe even the framing, that, that can become 
uh, things worth uh, concentrating on as well. So, but anyway, that's the, uh, kind of the gist of the thought process I'm going through when I'm looking at these images to try and add points or take away points or or stay within your uh, your guidelines. Uh, I will say that uh, going through the images uh, that were submitted this time, sometimes it's it's not very hard to stay within guidelines, and other times it's a bit of a challenge. It's sort of a bit of a challenge. So I guess what that translates to there may be a little bit disappointed in what you might have seen. Well, that's not my fault. That's I thought it would be better than saying. Hey, that's human. That was appreciated. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you, Bob. I'll read the image and then you can remark on it. I'll read the title. Okay. And then on images that score eight and above, I will read the photographer's name. We'll start with the assignment images, and our assignment for this salon was window. And we'll start with the sixes. This one is called Amsterdam Window. Would it be possible to get this uh, ceiling light off? Oh, oh, good point. Well, we can get all the lights off. Or all the lights. That'd be fine, too. Good idea. Yeah, they're much better. All right. Better. So here's Amsterdam Window. Yeah, now this, this window is, is very simple. And... Uh, it has some good qualities. Um, the thing that uh, I couldn't go too far with it was was right here. This this branch did not add to the picture. It actually uh, took some quality out of there. In my opinion, uh, I don't I don't think I would have picked this window, considering that that branch was was kind of uh, leading the way. So. Um, it kind of pulls you back to the left of the picture. Here is Empire Gothic. Okay, now uh, th this has a whole bunch of uh, windows to look at, but the maker chose to try to get them all. I think, in my opinion, that's a little bit too much. Uh, this is more what I would call a tourist picture. If you went to this town and said, wow, what a cool building. You probably you could take this picture, and you, you know, from that standpoint, it's pretty good. But you don't want to talk. not for this subject, not for this, not for this salon assignment. I think maybe I would have gone in and tried to do something with some combination of windows. You pick your three best windows. The combination of three often works, and if I would have done that one differently. Okay, here is library window. Okay, the library window. Uh, there's there's a lot of this is pretty stunning. The edge, edges and some uh, looks like some stained glass windows. The the center, however, is is right there, and the subject is because of the way it's set up. It's this. That's just too soft. And I would what I would have liked to see in there would be to either sharpen it, and that would take some doing to keep this as sharp as it was, or blur it completely to the point where you're really only thinking about this. So I would have I've done that a little different. Okay. Lift bridge window. Now in this case, first of all, the lift bridge is over here. So uh, this is really kind of neat. So but I would argue that this is not a window. This is a frame. There's a difference. You can frame things in a, in a lot of ways. Especially things like this can do framing, and you can do some really neat stuff with framing. You gotta get the subject. I, I even with my on my computer with my magnifier, I had a heck of a time really identifying that. So. To do a little better, you would have to have gotten that sharper, but it almost doesn't fit the category. Music under glass. Now here's a, this must have been a fun concert to sit and and, uh, and look at. Um, 
But the problems in here, are, I think, are fairly obvious. You need a lot more interior lighting because you certainly would want detail on the subjects. The windows are very much a secondary aspect to this. Um, now, if you got more lighting, you could get maybe find some ways to get some benefits of the flowers and a variety of different ways. It might have been kind of hard because maybe you couldn't move from your spot. But again, this is a another kind of a tourist type uh, picture. Urban Diner. Mickey's Diner. I've seen some really spectacular pictures of, of Mickey's Diner. And this has some of that. As long as you get this, you, you're on your way. However, in this case, we needed more on the window. Windows are there, but there's, there's no real good detail. This is kind of the subject. And I would totally have gotten rid of these cars. Um, the cars are, are a distraction and, and they're just clear enough and they're showing some motion and everything that it takes away from the real subject, which is somewhere in here. Yeah. Now on to the sevens. We'll start with Cheese Window Italia. I, I admit, I, I really, I liked this picture. I thought this was, was really cool. I, I, uh, I kind of imagined myself standing in front of this window with, with the maker and looking at all that. I had wondered what kind of cheese that is. I don't know much about French cheese, but anyway, uh, in this case, I thought there's pretty good detail here in the composition, uh, very likable. Um, so overall, it's, it's a pretty good picture. Um, not sure if I have any recommendations on, on how to shoot it differently. Here's French window. Yeah, now, now we're kind of getting towards what I was uh, envisioning this category would be really looking for. And the, the subject is the window. And that's and that's quite nice. And it's got the, the flowers below. Um, I was, uh, as I saw, at least on my computer, I guess I would have liked a little bit more light on it. And, and then, of course, the, the blankness of the windows, that's okay. Um, I'm not sure what I would have wanted more than that, but pretty good picture. Okay. Landmark Center Window Reflections. You know, I thought this, the more, the more I looked at this, the more I thought this is, this is really neat. But it is a, one of the busiest pictures in the entire salon because of there, all the details and everywhere. But these lines going through it are at very good spots because the windows and, the, and everything is, are being reflected pretty nicely. Again, it's a, it's, I, I don't want to call it a common picture, but it's a picture that I've seen before that people have tried tried to do and, and you get uh, varying results and, and this is this is quite good okay here's lavender times okay now to me in this case uh they, they got the uh um they got the uh the detail pretty well or i should say the lighting pretty well i'm losing my pointer Okay, sorry about that. Okay, anyway, um, I always like to see things in threes. So what I would, would have done to prove this, I would have taken these three and worked with these three panes. I would have taken this one out. This three, in my mind, you know, the old guideline of one, three, five, or many, three is always better than four. Well, nothing's always, but very frequently. And I, and I, when I tried to look at this without this in here, it was distinctly improved. And then you could work with one of these as, as your main tub. You probably knew that. So overall, kind of an interesting picture of lighting. Okay. Here is Linda's Fawn Rose Window. Yeah, now this, this is another really nice picture. And I, I like the rose. 
it's not distracting in the same way that uh, we saw an earlier shot that had just the branch in front. This brings you up to the rose itself. However, the rose itself is a little bit soft, so it, it loses some of it, it loses some of its impact. I also wondered, gee, you got all these flowers down here. What would this whole thing look like if it was more of a vertical and you got some of the flowers down there? That's that's tricky to do that because whatever's down here might might not be that. Um, attractive, but it's overall it's, it's a good shot, and I, I do like the curtain. First, I like the, the curtain and the whiteness from the curtain better than, than an absolute black. Okay. Here is Twig the Cat. Twig the Cat. Now, this is cute. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is one where I. I uh, and all sorts of variety of thoughts. First of all, I didn't quite understand the window part of it. It looks like it's boarded up to some degree. Then what's the twig you doing in there? How did it get in there? And I really, really wanted to see this picture in color. Because I want to know what color the twig is. First of all, it seems to me that he would stand out more dramatically in there if, if this was in color. But uh, pretty, pretty interesting shot, very unique. Okay. okay, we're going on to the eights now, so you'll have to be patient with me as I'm reading it a little bit in the dark. We're going to start with Death Valley View by Marianne Jerks. Yeah, this this one, um, this had a lot of things going for it. First of all, at least on my computer, Detail down here was, was really neat. You could tell this is an old old building. Then you're looking up out into Death Valley, and you're kind of bringing yourself up to this mountain. On one hand, it's not a real dramatic picture, but it's very nicely composed in the window. So I like that. Okay, here's Min Cap Lookout by Steve Cole. Now here's a case where I would say that the the uh, monochromatic use was the right use of the way to present this. And I think this banister, the way it was set up, had a nice lead in. You notice how this banister almost, almost parallel is the side of the building behind there. So that was very intentional, in my opinion, and uh, made for a Kind of a neat composition. Okay, on to the nines. We're starting with Abandoned Farmhouse Memories by Steve Clocker. Well, you know, here here's the window. So it's obviously the window, and you're getting that, that ambient light in from the window, and it's showing on some old stuff, a photo, a hat. A, it's like, I'm not sure what that is. Maybe some kind of picture. All the old stuff is still sitting there. What a story. This is a terrific story. And this going with this, going to that. that that's very, very nicely done. Okay. Here is The Church of St. Mary's by Mick Richards. Yeah, now this one, um, boy. Right there is is really the point of interest, but then it leads you right up. It leads you right up to the window, and the color and the light is just it's just right everywhere in here. A very large, a very large picture, and you got all the right light and detail on the the organ pipes. Wow, that's really good, but. With this adds enough to it to, to put it at that higher category. Okay, and here is Window with Shutters by Jay Olson Goody. Well, I don't know where this was, and I I regret to say that I I immediately thought of this, but I thought of the Ukraine when I saw this picture. I mean, I thought. Boy, if that doesn't look like the side of a Ukraine building, 
uh, these days. I, I probably haven't seen any other picture that does. And, it, and I realize it could be anywhere in, in the world, I suppose, but it certainly looks to me like a, an Eastern European mood to it. And, every, and the whole thing is just composed very nicely. The, I think the, the gray uh, of the entire thing, including the, the drapes, um, is just really neat. Kind of moody, but it's really nice. Yeah. On to the tens. Here we'll start with abandoned farmhouse shattered dreams. And this is again Steve Plocker. Well, once again, you've got you got it in monochrome. You start with an amulet, comes right in and just highlights this. This would be this broken base or whatever it is, is um obviously the subject, but you know, it just ties the old history together in this. Um, uh, this had a, had a real, real emotional feel to it, I think. And watching from the window by Melissa Anderson. Now this, this is the picture that uh, I kind of envisioned would be what it is, in other words, the best in show. You got this nice lady saying hi. She's sitting there above her flowers, her nice window, all sorts of of uh, detail and, and texture in the, the side of the building. It's all lit for me. I may go on and on. This, this is a terrific picture. It, it, there's only one thing that I would say about it, and this is very questionable. When I see a picture like this, I think, well, okay, if I was going to, if I was going to Crop this at all? Would I would I want to crop some of this and make it a little more square? Yeah, maybe. But overall, this is a terrific picture. Okay, <laughs> on to the creative category. We'll start with the sixes again, and we will start with tractor ride. Okay, the tractor ride looks like it was one that was taken early in the morning, and uh, I really struggled to figure out. How to look at this because it's obviously quite soft and I didn't believe that that was intentional. Now maybe the uh, farmer standing there but I couldn't even recognize that on my computer and even so um, there's just too many things that that weren't accomplished with this. Uh, I certainly wouldn't have had all this dead space in there. That's just way too much. Okay. On to the sevens then, and we'll start with bear. You know, I'm looking at this, and I don't know, it's got a little uh, arrow there. Is that? I don't know what that is. That's it's me. My mouse is here. That's me. Oh, you still get to have a mouse. Oh, I guess. Well, I'm sorry. I, I just want to point out it's not part of the image. You know, <laughs> I, I'm, uh, I'm experiencing what I expected, which is to say, when I was looking at this on my computer, I was pretty sure that this was going to look better on screen than it did, than it did on my computer, and it does. So, um, in any case, it's it's well done. You got the catch light in the eye. What I couldn't see very well enough on my computer was, the, and there's still not quite the detail on the nose that you might want in the in the mouth. Um, but overall, um, it, it's actually quite a good picture. I might have wanted to consider uh, some cropping there and make it a, a vertical rather than square, but that, that's questionable too. Okay, next is flying psychedelic amoebas. I think I first experienced this in 1967. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what we were doing at the time. <laughs> but anyway, this is, this is beautiful. And, but, uh, you know, again, as I look at it, I, I couldn't figure it out too well. So, I, I mean, it's beauty alone, you know, it's got some, it's certainly got some merit, but uh, I, I because it's, it, it is and probably intentionally obscure, uh, I got a little bit lost in it, although it did make me laugh. Go ahead. 
Here is Wild Horses of Florida. Wild Horses of Florida. Well, horses, boy, have I seen a lot of horses. Uh, actually, there's there's several things I like in here. First of all, they, they pick three horses. That's a good idea. They get all sorts of layers in this picture. That's good as far as the landscape aspect of it. The problem is these horses are far enough apart that you, you couldn't zoom in on them and, and keep any detail. In each case, at least this one and this one, they're, they would make pretty interesting close-ups. So I might have been inclined, for example, to try to make a vertical of this to get a lot closer to this guy and see what kind of detail I could get. Or this one, because the head is in pretty good position. So the, the value of the horses isn't what it can be, I think, in, in a lot of uh, images. Yeah. On to the eights. Here is Watch Out Below by Mick Richards. Now, this has got some subtle things in it, some that are pretty obvious. First of all, that's a leading line. The, the, uh, here, there, that's that's really obvious. That leads you out there very nicely. He's going with the kind of the rule of thirds uh, as far as his horizon line. Another interesting thing is you got three there and three there and three there and three there, and three, there and three there. Whoever made this one sure knew with, with the rule of thirds which could help a picture. And <laughs> I actually wondered if they were added afterwards. But uh, the, the one thing that I again when I look at it on the on the screen, I, I kind of go back and forth. The um, sepia quality of this, and I don't know that it's sepia, it's some kind of filter that I, I'm not sure what it would be. Um, it, it doesn't do that much for me. I, I might have wanted to do that in black and white. I'm not 100 percent sure of that because they this was this was also well composed, such a neat composition. Okay. okay, on the nines now, we have Song Sparrow by Don Specht. Yeah, this is one of those when you you look at it and, and you say, "Wow, look at that!" Now, obviously, this is this is <laughs> hugely um, saturated, but yeah, it's very sharp. I've seen pictures that are oversaturated and then they, they'll, they'll lose sharpness. I don't think that happened here. And so, of course, they got the decisive moment when the mouth is open and they're singing and you got the catch light in the eye and all those good qualities that you want in a superior picture. So this is very, very nice. Okay. And here is Wisconsin Homestead by Chap Aiken. I really like this picture. You know, I'd, I'd take a copy of this and put it on my wall if I didn't have so many of my own pictures. But, uh, just you got the leading line and you got some kind of filter that was used that I think really helped with what appears to be an overcast day. And then it leads you right to the, the uh, point of interest, which is the cows coming out. Um, man, what a composition. This is just this is just the way it should be done, as far as I can tell. Okay. Okay. Here are the tens. This is "Elf in the Flowers" by Fred Sabatka. Well, is that creative or what? It, obviously, this was put together. Uh, I don't know if it was two different images put together or how they did it, or they had, they had her pose for this or what. But it sure jumps out at you. And I was hugely impressed with the creativity of it all. And I don't have much to say that, except that I did play with the idea of just taking all that out, which of course is all really good, and making it into a square shot. And and I, I would uh, mention to the uh, maker that they could give that a try, just, just for the heck of it. But great shot. And finally, Rising Moon by Melissa Anderson. Look at that. 
Does a creative shot get any better than that? I don't know what more to say. I mean, you got your S curve going through that. This is a landscape shot that, that was manipulated. And then you add this in, whether it was there in the first place and you just change the color or it was added later. This is the definition of a creative shot. So X minus color. Okay, on to nature. We'll start with the sixes. This is Florida owl. Okay, so in this one, uh, it certainly looks like it's in a natural setting, and that's that's a good thing. Now, on my computer, and even here, this is just too dark. If you're going to take an owl picture, you really want something uh, that's good in regards to the head. And this, the, unfortunately, the lighting on it wasn't that good. Um, good post-processing have done something about that, maybe. Um, and that's what I, I would say was really necessary. Because all the rest of it, the, the setting and everything is, is, is pretty good. But uh, you really, I couldn't see any, you know, I don't know if you'd call that catch light, but I couldn't see that on the computer. So uh, I'd have to say that, that that's something that really should have been dealt with before putting it in the salon. Okay. Next is Goat Point Sunset. This is one of those pictures where uh, you see something and it's just jaw dropping because the sky is so beautiful and, and you, you love it and everything else. But then you forget to really kind of compose your picture because there's, there's all this busyness is blocking it out. Now, I'm not saying that you wouldn't feature something to say, but not in quite such a busy way. And uh, so I, I think there was an opportunity missed. Or now, now, of course, how long does the sky stay like that? Minutes at best. So you really have to make a quick decision if you, if you have an opportunity like this. So, so it was worth a try. And of course, I wouldn't throw it away. Keep it in your collection. Okay. On alert. On alert. This looks like a jackalope or something like that. And <laughs> it's another one of those where I, I, I just envisioned that the, the maker ran across it and took a took their best chance to get it, and that's that's what they got. Uh, unfortunately, you, you got a whole bunch of dead space that doesn't add anything to it, and you don't have anything more, and the eye wasn't what you would like. So there, there's the antlers. That that's a pretty cool thing. And so believe it or not, if I was going to do anything, I might have really come in tight and done not, nothing more than that, just the parts that's in focus and made a completely different kind of shot because all this uh, doesn't, doesn't balance the way you would. On to the sevens. We'll start with Asian orchid. Well, I mentioned earlier there was one that uh, I thought was going to be better on on the uh, on the screen, and here's another one. Uh, however, when I was looking on the computer, and it even shows here, you've got pink on a little bit darker pink. What if that had a dark background, black or green or anything dark? That would just jump right off the screen at you. It, it would be really dramatic. So in my mind, this should have been changed to something else. I could think of at least three or four uh, other colors that I would, I would have given a try, if possible. Here's Basque Murmuration. Yeah, now here's another one that's, that's uh, got some reflection and you've got a whole bunch of layers. It's, that's all good stuff. Um, and so overall, that's, that's a nice picture. The, main, the point of interest, and in, as far as I can tell, and that most important subject is right here. And it looks like it must be a flock of birds or something like that. And now maybe you don't have the reach for it or whatever the reason, 
But I would have really wanted to do something like this um, and not gotten caught up in the entire shot. The entire shot is pretty good. But if you could have done something like this, as well as the background, that would have that would have enhanced it. Burrowing owl. Burrowing owl. Now here's one where you've got the green background, you've got lots of detail. I mean, this really is a terrific shot. And I, I, in my judgment, and this is one, every once in a while I have somewhere I think somebody might want to argue with me. When I looked at the eyes, they looked oversaturated. Maybe that's that's an unfair judgment. But I had, but it's partly because I have quite a collection of olives, and I have a number of burrow owls, and none of them. Their faces, none of their faces look like that. I even double checked, but my camera was right. So somehow the eyes of this burrowing owl are dramatically different than what I've shot in the past. I don't know why, and I don't know if it's because of the processing. I suspect it's possible because this, all this uh, terrific uh, detail looks to me like so. Uh, nice work in post process. Okay. Here's a female Quetzal with a mouthful. Yeah, now here's one where the whole thing that was captured was uh, it looked like a fortuitous shot to me, especially to get this. However, when I looked at it again on the computer and even here, if you look at this, and even like compared to the previous image, you can see the difference in, in how, in that this is slightly soft, especially up in the head area and so on and, and that. And that kind of leaves it at a level that's pretty interesting, but not quite outstanding. This is Huddle Up. Huddle Up. <laughs> well, there's another one that I, I will admit looks nicer on, on here than it did on my computer, although it looked pretty, it looked pretty much the same. Uh, I like all the detail on the feathers and, and that. <laughs> but I, I couldn't help but want to get something more than, they, than this as far as the head goes. Now, if this would have been completely hidden, so you couldn't even tell where there was a head, then it might actually have been better. So I would have liked to see the head pop up somehow, or even go up. But pretty interesting shot. Kind of hard to uh, kind of hard to capture. Moving furniture. Uh, Two title because they. It's implying they're building their nest. Uh, as I looked at it, I was actually seeing two pictures. I was seeing one over here, one over here. And the two of them together, in my mind, wouldn't be better than those individual pictures. Pretty good shot, pretty rare shot. Um, and reasonably well captured. Uh, there's some softness in it, but uh, uh, kind of a neat shot. Um, but I would have played with probably this side, just see what you can get there. Okay. Here's Rosie at Spoonbill in flight. Yeah, this is this is really pretty. Beautiful bird. Uh, a little bit burnt out here, but I don't think you can help that. You get a lot of detail in the wings, so that was. That was really nice, beautiful, beautiful bird. Uh, the head is going in the wrong direction. <laughs> help that, uh, but uh, be nice if that was a little bit different angle. Otherwise, pretty nice shot. Here is Swan Eye. Yeah. Oh, okay. So. It's it's all about this. 
And as I looked at it, notwithstanding that there's, there's a whole bunch of, of detail that's really captured there, I wanted this one to be in color because in color wouldn't look a lot of, a lot different than this, but I felt that you'd get the eye bit and maybe even a little bit better uh, picture of the beak. However, of course, this this arch where they're kind of maybe he's coming out of a sleep or something is is pretty neat. So overall, it's it's a uh, it's a nice shot and. Um, I think the, the level of detail that was captured was really pretty good for, for anything that's white like that. Okay. Here's Swan Stand. Yeah, I would imagine that uh, you could, sometime this winter, you could have walked out the door here and walked a few blocks down and you'd be trying to capture that. Um, I know I've been down there quite a few times. And this is well done. Um, you know, you got some reflection, you can see the, the motion, uh, quite well done. We didn't, couldn't get much in the way of the head and that when it's going in that direction, but uh, got a lot of nice uh, uh, detail in the wings. So it's a good shot. Okay, on to the eights. We'll start with Anhinga with Lunch by Don Speck. Yeah, this is a really good story here. This this guy is uh, no longer for the world, and and this guy's not going to let him go. So um, I like a number of things about this. Uh, I kind of like the little bit of the diagonal, uh, the action, the basic nature of it all. Uh, good picture. And tricolored heron by Marianne Jerks. This is kind of fun because uh, you really got a lot of the detail of the, the neck and you got a, the natural S of it, which is kind of cool. And then all the detail here. The one, one thing I might have uh, considered doing would have been to kind of crop off some of this dead space up here. I don't, I don't think that that really um, would, en would enhance the picture that much. And whenever you do something like that, you, you naturally get more detail and more focus on the subject. And that's a singular subject like that. Okay, the ninth. Here's Kildeer on a Frosty Morning. And this is by Don Specht. Well, I looked at this picture multiple times and I just felt that from, from beak to tail, this was a perfect shot of this particular bird. I mean, the lighting and the detail and and the way it's composed, I like the, the angular of the, the back where it's I think it's through at an angle. Um, this is just this is terrific. How did, how did you how did you do it? And did you crop it? And so on. Probably, but you did right. So I really like this picture. Oyster Catcher Feeding Chick by Mary Ann Sear. Well, here's one where we've got what I call the decisive moment. Just as that little piece of food can drop into the chick's mouth. And then the detail here is, you know, it's black on white. Details captured pretty well. This is a little soft, but not too bad. Considering where it is, it, it certainly looks like it's, uh, I don't know, if it's white sand or if it's infrared or what, but uh, this is a, my opinion. This looks like a very difficult shot to capture. It's done well. Okay. Here's Proud Peacock by Fred Svatka. You know, I, this, this, this picture just grabbed me. Was. It's it's simple, but look at the detail capture. And there's a tendency, at least of what I've seen over the years, for people when they say, oh, peacock, let's get the whole thing. They want to take a large picture. Not too many people have friends of mine that say, 
I'm just going to do everything I can to get the detail in the head because with the crown and everything, that's a really cool picture. And, and so I just really enjoyed looking at that picture. It's done well that I actually met. And here's Turkey Dinner by Carl Wagner. Well, here's one where you've got, you got, it's obviously in the snow and the turkey didn't survive the attack by the eagle, but that's nature. And he's looking at you and saying, hey, don't get any closer because this is my kill. I mean, this is a really, really powerful story. Not the most comfortable maybe, but very powerful. And I, I thought this was done extremely well, especially to get detail in the feathers when it's such a bright day. Figured out the lighting or adjust it very nicely. Okay, on to the tens. Here's Leaf Attack by Steve Cole. Well, what a story. First of all, you got you got this bull eagle on coming down. Now you know darn well he's not attacking leaf. Leaf just happened to be in the picture. Something in the water line that he's actually going to grab. But to have the leaf there makes a what would otherwise be a dramatic shot whimsical. <laughs> so I thought that was terrific. But again, it's it's a decisive moment because probably if he's shooting a burst of shots, probably the next shot he's got his feet in the water. And uh and, and would that be as good as this? Yeah, I, this, is, this is a 10, for sure. Okay. Uh oh. You know? Oh, okay. Sorry. Sunset Eagle. I'm sorry. By Carl Wagner. Okay. <laughs> well, here we are again. Another another uh, golden eagle rather than our. So young eagle, bull eagle, but uh, look at this. I, I mean, talk of, that that is uh, composed so well to, to get this kind of a arrangement. And then you got both the head and the feet are very sharp. Don't know exactly what he's attacking, and I and the way I envision it, he probably it's probably shot at the standard. Uh, three by two uh, size, uh, cropped it and made it into a square. Very smart. That was the way to make it better, and it is. Okay, that's the end of the pictorial. Do we want to take a quick break? No, keep going. Okay, All right, I mean, that was the end of nature. Sorry. Now we're on to pictorial. Take a break. <laughs> she asked me, I said no. We apparently think yes. Can we do a five minute? We can take a break, sure. Okay, quick break, everyone. Water and snacks on the back table. Steve, you're just cast. Yeah. <laughs> How do you think it's coming through when he's talking? See? Because maybe next time you can judge this mic and possibly. Either way. Clip it here. Yeah. We'll learn. Yeah. We we'll don't have to worry about it. Dude. No. I'm probably broadcasting right now. Unless you turn this off. <laughs> oh, I don't know. So you're hearing this every time I do it. I heard the slang through and I thought, oh, it's hard. Um, I'm yeah. just thrilled if we don't have feedback. Or... It's not absolutely perfect. Yeah, yeah. We're supposed to yeah. <laughs> And uh, they'll see the show. What looks at the the recording? Well, recording Mary Angel the actually show. contacted me, so I know she'll watch it. So I don't know if she can hear her. Yeah, I'll bring. This is working well with the Zoom, I think. 
but I'm going to bring a little light next time so I can actually, because I do this so small, so it fits on a few pages, and then I'm like, now I can't read my own thing. So, next time, hybrid meeting, so we'll see how that goes. It won't be that difficult. Another chance we have a hybrid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like I said earlier, on, the guy has to respond to if he's going to be in the room or attend to us. He's a savage, so I guess I'm going to stay there. He's a savage Minnesota, so I guess he will stay there. Actually, I'll make it easier. Why drive here? Yeah, I hope it's coming through well. Yeah. When that second eagle photo came up, I thought it went on to the next category. I thought something got moved up. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Which is the shortest market? Tell you right now. You better get to feel Well, this is the first in person. Three years, three years, and I wasn't sure what to expect. I thought there'd be a few months. I mean, I see you're trying to like, there are, what it is, we've got the written comments. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Some people would be lost. Yeah, that's what I was Some people would be lost in person. Some people really prefer that. And then things change everything. Change everything. Sometimes it's also kind of good and sometimes it's not. Okay, let's get back to work here. I'm the taskmaster, oh, yeah. taskmaster of song. <laughs> All right, we're going to continue with the pictorial category here. So get each other's emails and email each other. <laughs> Where's my gavel? We're good. Okay. Okay, we're back to it. Starting, well, I left a slide in. We'll start with the sixes. And we're going to start with bear. Okay, bear. So where's the bear? Well, there's the bear. And the bear looking for the fish. Um, probably an interesting piece of art. I, I don't personally know where this is. Looks like there's a little snow there or something. Maybe it's in Colorado or something. Anyway, um, this is what in the category of what I would call a tourist picture. The time that you want to capture and put yourself in it and say, hey, we were there. But as far as it being a salon picture, it's got it's way too busy. The, the main point of interest uh, is really kind of hard to uh, hard to see at, as far as detail goes. And there's something else to this that is generally not or frequently not acceptable, and that is simply taking pictures of someone else's art. And th this is someone else's art, and if that's the subject, that in many cases, that's, that may not even be acceptable. So by and large, uh, this is a picture that, uh, a little blunt, but I, I simply wouldn't have submitted this one, okay? Next is Curious Pine Mart. Now this this is one where you probably might have been startled by it or something, and you got a shot at it, and you almost got it, but it's soft. It's it's actually pretty nicely composed, and you got the color, and, and obviously a lousy day to picture, uh, take a picture, because I can see that it was snowing. And a lot of times when it's when it's snowing, you're out of focus is not quite as sharp as you would like it to be. And so depending on, on a, a few things, think about doing, uh, if possible, doing manual focus when you're in the, when you're in the snow because your autofocus can be fooled uh, on a snowy day, okay? Here's, mountains are near. Mountains are near. Okay, where's the mountains? <laughs> uh, I, I felt that, that the mountains should be in here. Again, this might be another Colorado tourist picture or something, but I don't, I don't even see in here where my point of interest is. It's, again, it's not a bad picture if you're taking pictures of your trip, uh, but as far as a, a salon picture goes, all I can say is it's it's a nice snapshot, but it's not it's not the kind of pictures that uh, um, I usually see. Here is owl face. 
Now, at first glance, this looks like the woman's head and the owl kind of go together, which could be kind of funny. But then when you look at it for a few more seconds, you see that the, the woman behind the owl, the owl is pictured okay, but the woman behind it is a total distraction. And this is an example of a run-in where uh, something behind the primary image distracts too much from it. And that's what happened. If you were in a position to shoot them straight on, you might be able to get the two of them together. That would be a big improvement. Uh, but this, this really misses the mark because of the woman's head. Here is Snowberry Clearwing. Sorry. Snowberry Clearwing stands in for Richard Petty. Well, it's implying that this bird, I think, you can't even tell what it is, it, sitting right at the steering wheel, uh, might drive away with the car. That's a funny story. Unfortunately, there's no detail of this, and, and you can't even get a sense of what the, what the bird looks like. But I think you have to have more than just a good story. So might have had to zoom in and try to get the detail of this, which of course means you might always well, all this. It's a tough shot to get. Kind of a fun thing to see, I imagine. But as far as um, uh, it being a competitive image. Okay. On to the sevens. We'll start with Cottonwood on the big turn. Now here's one that almost looks like an infrared shot. I don't know for sure, but it's, it has some of that kind of quality. And there's a lot going for it as far as you know, the river curve and everything. And, and then this, this tree is, is pretty interesting. In my mind, that, that all those good things that are in here, uh, I wanted this to be composed differently. And I can't tell you exactly how, but I felt that the tree and the river weren't complementary. I felt they were competing, competing with each other. And so was there another way to move around and get this, you know, in a little different position? I, I would have, I wanted that. I don't know if that was possible. Family farmhouse, the pink room. Well, here, here's a shot that I, my first reaction was, Gee, this could have been in the windows category. If you cut the window, it's almost the main subject. And once again, you got a window that you can't see much out of. It's it, it's uh, kind of blurred, and that's that's a, that's okay. Uh, then you got the rest of it all kind of falling apart. So it's it's kind of a neat shot. And again, my reaction was, why well, didn't put it in the other category? But um, it's still pretty, pretty interesting shot. Here's Invisible Women. Well, Invisible Women, and there was, I think that was plural. Now, I could see a woman here image. Once again, that's somebody else's art, but um, got me looking for them. And at least on the computer, I struggled to see multiple women. Oh, maybe that's more so. Okay. Uh, anyway, this again to me, uh, notwithstanding that it's that it's added monochromatic, um, still has a tourist quality to it. Lake Michigan sunset. Yeah, this this is really pretty and. In my mind, the kites in the air add a lot. What I debated about was, what about this person? It's, it's pretty good, and it's in a good, pretty good spot. Um, but I couldn't make my mind if it was a thing that, that was added nicely or is a little bit distracting. I, I liked this part of the image more than this part of the image. So, um, 
once again, it's one of those moments when you don't have a lot of time to, to do very much, but the, the light being lost, but um, still the, the kites in the air were, were the part that made it the best. Okay. Making Cavatelli. Making Cavatelli. Is that, a, is, it, is that Italian or what is that? I don't, I don't know exactly what that is, but um, pretty interesting uh, overall picture as, as far as the, the handmade, um, whatever, the handmade food. And I guess there's, a, there's really a story in all of this that, that's also pretty interesting. So. I like this picture. It's uh, it's not overly dramatic, but uh, neat picture. Okay. Here's Northern Shores. Northern Shores. Now, here I'm almost guessing where this is. I'm, I, my my guess is that this might be uh, in two harbors, but uh, not totally sure of that. But what the maker did here was something that I got a piece of advice many years ago, and they they obviously did that here. And that is when you're gonna look at a landscape, the first place that you tend to look is out, out in the distance, look out there. But the better place to look is at your feet. Start, start looking at your feet and work your way out because at your feet may be a really interesting part of the image. That's what they did here. Look at all this. This is really great. They really captured the shoreline and the rocks aspect of it. I mean, some of this is, is, is a bit soft, but it's it's very interesting. Now you got you got the person hiking, and that's there, I imagine, to add some perspective. And it does, but I I struggled with whether or not the placement was what. I was really comfortable with because to me, this leading line was really nice at the shore. And this breaks that leading line. And is it as good as it could have been? I don't know. I, number one, do I really want this, this guy in there? And if I do, do I want him there? Or maybe do I want him here or, or what? So I like the picture a lot, but I also kind of struggle with the, um, with the hiker. Okay, here's Oregon Coast. Oregon Coast. Well, once again, here's a picture that uh, looks a little nicer up here than it did on my computer. And what looks nicer, frankly, is this part down. One of the suggestions I was going to say was maybe just crop all that lower part out and make sure that you keep your focus going out that way. Because this, this, this stuff is actually pretty interesting, but it doesn't exactly lead you in. Like these are all leading lines and, and the subject, the, the wave action is the subject itself and it's, it's going into the light. So a lot, of, a lot of nice stuff going on in there. Okay. Poetry sunset. Now here's one where the sunset, I think, is it is lost. This is the, not a dramatic sunset at all. Can you get that out of there? I just saw so that. Me again. That's me. Yes. Yeah, thanks. Um, I but I'm looking at this, and you got these these harbor buildings, and that kind of leads you out in there. I probably would have wanted to do a, a different shot that's really featuring these buildings, because that's so interesting. And, and maybe something in the harbor itself. I, I didn't think that all of this was all that worthwhile, uh, because the sunset is probably just past its peak or something that's not quite as dramatic as you would like a sunset to be. Whereas you've got some pretty darn interesting things there to shoot. Okay. 
storm clouds over the beach. And here is a very nice dramatic picture. And you know, the, the people down on the beach, you gotta be wondering, are we gonna get gonna get hit by lightning or something? Because this looks like a storm clouds that are coming pretty fast. So it's got a got a it's a potentially dramatic story with it. One thing that I don't particularly like, and I think it's true here, is where you, you bullseye your horizon line. This is this is one of those places where I would like to at least try to apply the rule of thirds, where it's maybe it's up here, maybe somehow it's down here a little bit. And that would depend on what you want to do with the beach, because the clouds are dramatic in this area. They're pretty bland up in here, except for the darkness, of course. So I, I would probably have tried one or the other. And, and maybe even uh, a really high horizon line. That's another higher possibility. You'll see a picture later on that has something like that that I'll comment on. And you can see how effective that can be. Okay. The fallen. <laughs> well, the, wherever this is, I mean, it, it, <laughs> It looked like it was right out of Dungeons and Dragons or something. I don't know. But this is obviously what's fallen. So it's kind of, it's just a, an interesting picture. But the thing that I also was uh, kind of disappointed in was I couldn't figure out any perspective. I mean, if I was standing next to it, next to it would I be this tall or would I be this tall? I mean, I kind of wanted to know that. And so it's uh, it's got an issue from that standpoint in my mind. Otherwise, you look at all the texture in here, that's pretty that's pretty cool stuff. And I also kind of wondered about looking up in here, you got a lot of texture. You know, maybe there'd be something to putting that up there. I just thought there's there may be all sorts of other compositions that, that could work. What is what is that bad? Okay. On to the eights now. We'll start with April in Theodore Roosevelt National Park by Mary Ann Sear. Well this is the, the on the other picture where I talked about this being kind of both look at this high horizon line and how now it's a different area of course. And then you take the river going through it, you get that S-curve effect. And the river in this case is the subject itself. And wow, that really brings you into the picture. I mean, that's got lots of depth to it. And depth is almost always a good thing in an image. So uh, overall, this it's kind of a stark landscape, but at the same time, it's it's really dramatically set up. Here's Blowing Bubbles by Tom Garfin. Well, what's not good about a kid in a bubble? For, I, I, sit there. <laughs> I spent a lot of time last summer with my six-year-old granddaughter blowing the bubbles on my deck. We never got one quite that big, I guess. And this captures it. I mean, this this is really fun, and uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if there's any anything better you could say to do with this. Uh, you're just snapping away, and and then you capture something, and you, and she's so focused on it. That's that's the story. And that's really good. Here we have great egret mating display by Marianne Dirks. Look at this. I mean this. The, the, all these lines from the feathers, how unique is that? The rest of it is sharp um, and colorful. Then you got kind of angular shots. Um, once again, it's, it's set up in kind of a square. That was the right thing to do. I suspect that it was cropped to that. Um, well done. Here is pulling a plane by Fred Sabatka. I never seen anything like that. 
pulling an airplane. <laughs> now there is a strange story in my mind. I've never seen anything like this before. And uh, of course, the whole thing is a, is a beautiful leading line and all the clouds actually kind of help. I personally would have tried to get this part out of there. I, I didn't particularly see any value there and would have tried to make it at least maybe a square shot in order to really concentrate on this. But as a story goes, it's, it's pretty unique. Um, uh, there's not a lot of detail provided, but it's certainly clear of, of what they're doing. Why they're doing it, I guess I don't understand, but uh, interesting. Here is West Bear Skin by Ann Rinkenberger. Okay. My mind, a lot of good stuff in this one. Here, here we go. We're throwing the canoe in or taking it out. I'm not really sure. Uh, but in any case, you're at a kind of a decisive moment because obviously you've just gone in the water with, with that. And you've got kind of a nice symmetry between these three. Added it, did it in sepia. I like sepia in this particular instance. Gives it a little bit of a uh, antique quality. One thing I would have done was to make it all just, make it just three. I would have gotten that, that canoe tip out of there because then you got and you got three and three is more powerful than four. Here is workbench also from Ann Rinkenberger. Now this is this is nicely set up and <clears throat> um, I'm not sure exactly what the work is. Um, it, it does look like something really old which in itself is pretty interesting. Uh, I did like the the setup. I think all this is balanced very nicely and showing all the, the things that it's showing. I, I thought the light was, was proper. I just liked the way this was done. I did wonder if maybe this was something that could have been shot effectively in color because I, I can't imagine, it doesn't look like there would be any really dramatic colors in there. They, they would probably be mostly earth tones, but even at that, that would, that might work really well in color too. Okay. On to the nines. We'll start with Badlands Coyotes by March Springett. Well, uh, this is one of those shots that, <laughs> It's like a it's, it's like a bucket list shot or something. I mean, what what's the odds of being able to get these two nicely composed, sharp, and posing like that? I've shot a lot of wildlife, and I've never been able to do this. So what they accomplished with this is a rare feat, and they and they nailed the detail of it. Um, what more could you have done with it? Not much. I thought maybe a little cropping over here, but that wouldn't necessarily be such a great idea because when they're facing in this way, that it implies that they, they would exit that way. And you always want to leave a little bit more room on the exit side than the entrance side. So this is just like, whoa, how did they do that? So. Anyway, everything about it is, is wonderful. Here's Wisconsin Point Light. This is by Mike Tron. Well, once again, this may be a little bit saturated. Or, um, I don't exactly how much. But other than that, it just, certainly jumps out at you. And of course, even though we're kind of at an even, um, you know, we're not we're not going high or low here. You're getting the things you want. You're getting these these reflections, and so you're pretty much filling the frame that way. The one thing that did occur to me was maybe you could trim a little there and trim a little there and make a vertical out of it. 
It's pretty close to square. Um, but I envisioned when I tried my vertical uh, aspect on it, I, I like that. So I don't know. Others might not think it's any better than this, but anyway, a really neat, really neat dramatic shot. And now our 10 Crown Graphics Kramer's Dry Plates by Steve Plocker. Well, I looked at this and I thought, yeah, this was shot in a studio somewhere by some professional studio uh, photographer. Because I don't know what else you could do with this. I mean, look at this. You got a little bit of a pool on it. You got, you got this, which ties into the subject. You got the layout. I mean, it doesn't just go on and on. Um, this is a 10, period. Okay, on to our newest category, cell phone photography. We'll begin with the sixes. Here's Denver Arts. Well, I've been talking about this a little bit as we go. Uh, this is uh, another really nice tourist shot. It's got the leading line, so it does bring you into it. Um, I, I couldn't decide where are the exact point of interest is, but it went, once again, I looked at this as, as a, a kind of a tourist shot. Very nice one. Okay. Here's Florida Sunset. Now this is one of those where you see the sunset and you say, oh, I got I got to get that. But what are you going to do? You know, when you think about it, you, you don't you don't always want the sun to be the subject. And that's what you've ended up with here. And that's not the most desirable thing. It'd be better to have some other point of interest than the sun. And even though you, you're going for reflection here, the, the water ripples don't give you as much of the reflection as you would have liked. Here is pool. Now this looks to me like the steps going down into a pool. And there's something to be said for the, the three lines and so on, but um, it, it just, it was something that I wanted to do differently, even though I can't explain what I, want, what I was going to do. Um, I would have wanted probably something else for some perspective. This this tries this ends up being more abstract than uh, I thought it needed to be. Okay, snow cave. Okay, so the snow cave apparently is, the idea is here. Uh, on my computer, I I couldn't see that, and I did, I really couldn't see what this is. If anything significant. And the snow cave in itself has, there's no real interest. Now, on the other hand, they, they did pretty good with the uh, snow on the branches and so on, although the lighting, once again, is it's pretty blown out because of the brightness of everything. So, um, again, I, I'm not sure how I would have handled this one differently. I just didn't think there was enough interest in this, this particular image. Here's St. Croix Crossing. Well, in, in this case, they're trying to, to lead me out, uh, I think, down, down across the bridge and, and escape from Wisconsin into Minnesota or vice versa. Uh, and, and that worked okay in this area, but with all this, it might have been fog or something, but it's, it's blown out to the point that I just wanted to move over here more somehow um, because all of this just didn't work for me. Okay. On to the sevens starting with Sand Island. Well, well, Sand Island got some very nice color in the rocks and it, 
maybe later in the day so that they're getting some of the warm color. So that's pretty good. And they're getting kind of a curve around there. That's that's also pretty good. I didn't see what I could decide as a real obvious point of interest here. And I felt that would have been that was necessary to make this uh, even better. Snow breaking point. Yeah, I like this. I like this one. Having been a former basketball player, I can relate to people that are not too happy with this. Um, and I, and I, I like the story of this. Uh, it did come across as a bit burnt out uh, and blown out, I should say. And might have, I might have tried to crop out the, the bottom part and really concentrate in on the basket itself. The other thing I wondered, this was done in black and white, and I, I also wondered if the rim was orange, like it might be in a gym. Now, maybe, maybe not, but if it's orange, I think I would have shot this in color because then it would get a point of interest and it would draw you to the rim. And, and in my mind, that, that could have been a real improvement. Here is sun, sunset at the beach. Yeah, now this, this picture, once again, I was saying you don't want the sun to be the primary subject, and it's not. You're, this uh, uh, pier is leading you way out into the, uh, the lake or whatever it is. You've got a, a path that's taking you down this way. And, and it comes up with the, the flag. This is your point of interest. So all those things are, are good. I wanted the point of interest, in other words, the flag, to be bigger and sharp. And whatever you'd have to do to accomplish that, in my mind, would, would improve this picture. And, and unfortunately, at this distance, maybe uh, whatever else, this is just too soft. I don't know what it is, but it's, it's too soft. Here's Trillery Gardens, Paris. Now, here, here's one where you get some very interesting leading lines, and obviously that there's there's uh, some kind of boulevard that is creating that. And then we've thrown in this big tree here. So the leading lines are, are pretty interesting. Um, but what's down here? I mean, is there something down here that would be a real uh, in, real point of interest in some way? Uh, I kind of wanted to know. So there's this is pretty interesting because of the, low, the leading lines. and. And I don't think the sky in this case matters much because of the monochromatic um, setting, but um, I wanted something else in there too. Okay, here come the eights, starting with Baby Kitten by Ricky Van Dyke. Baby Kitten, how, do you, how can you beat that? The Baby Kitten is probably sitting with on the cat or exactly no one this is, but it's uh, certainly uh, cute to see that. And it's a, it's a neat picture, especially when you bring in the blue eyes. The blue eyes give you that point of, point of interest, that point of reference, that's well done. I do think that I would have tried to get some of this hair out of here. Um, that, that was really busy and a little bit on the distracting side, but overall it's a really fun picture. And Great Fountain Geyser by Melissa Anderson. Yeah, now look at, look at how this is leading us in, into the geyser in the winter. That's that's depth. That's that's depth that I like to see. Got pretty good detail, uh, even though of course this steam and everything is going to get kind of blown out, and then it leads you out that way. I like this picture a lot. 
I'm not sure if I was going to do anything else. Maybe I'd take just a titch off the top. But otherwise, um, good shot. Okay, and here are the nines. This is Kinney Snow by Tom Garfin. This, this picture, um, for whatever reason, just kind of jumped out at me. And I think it's the, the spot that that uh, the captured the turn of the river. The tree here doesn't compete with it. And I think they're very complementary tree and the, uh, the river itself. It's got a uh, an infrared aspect to it. And again, I'm not sure if that's what it is. Maybe not. Um, these vapor trails that were going out of there, they actually seem like they're coming out of the tree. I realize that they're probably from some jets up in the air, but even so, uh, that, that seemed kind of neat. Um, others might think it's distracting, but I, I like it. Here is Roxy by Ricky Van Dyke. Well, Roxy with the blue eyes, very possibly a, a, an Australian shepherd, which uh, I happen to own one that looks a little bit like this, uh, has obviously been a really busy dog. So there's a story in all the snow that is on her and, and she dug herself a hole and now she's looking like, help me. I just got a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of information from her on that foot. So I, I thought that the way they captured her muzzle was also uh, very appealing, very good detail. Okay. okay, and this is Santiago Calatrava Quadrachi Pavilion. Uh, this has all these interesting lines. And then the whole thing leads you out into infinity. And the Boku and the black and white just enhances the whole concept. So that, that is a really cool effort of putting together an image that I don't know, you know, maybe it wasn't anything really exceptional to start with, but the maker turned it into something. Okay. okay, I forgot to mention the maker on that was Chap Aiken. So that is the end of our digital images, and we'll now turn the lights on and do the print judging. Okay. I'll turn this on. I can yell. Standing a swan by Carol. Yeah, that that that's an exceptional shot in because of the uh the light on the feathers, the backlight on the feathers really, really emphasizes uh the, the uh, flight of the swan. And I think the, the mat is basically simple, but that's all you need there. Nine. Nine. This is salon judge stare down. I was compelled to give this a score of 12. <laughs> <laughs> now, as you can see, this is very sharp. Uh, again, I think the math is simple, but that's all it was necessary. Uh, give it a score of nine. Uh, the feisty title actually helped. Uh, <laughs> it's, I, I do a lot of uh, eagle shooting in the winter, and I, mean, I, I have this shot. 
but I don't have any that are better than this shot. This is, this is about as good as you can do with that kind of shot when he's got his head turned and he's watching you. Got all the detail and the feathers. Uh, it's, it's very, very well done. Next is the mono fringe category. Here is majestic one. Yeah, the majestic one. Um, I like that it was done monochromatic. It was a good idea. Would have liked to have seen more detail, which is really difficult when it comes to bison. Closer you get, tougher it is. Uh, also, uh, I might have tried to make that into a, a possibly make that into a shooter. But overall, I think that the matting is quite nice on that. So I give that seven points. Both of these. Uh, um, there's a vendor. There's one I, called I, the vendors. Yeah, I neglected to put anything in the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the vendor. This is vendor. Yeah, it's a vendor. Um, this is a very good human interest shot, um, and you, it's it's kind of one that you can capture if you go to uh, open air markets and stuff. Um, and I think it's uh, pretty well done. Um, I, I might have tried to get more detail in this particular vendor's face and, and hands. It looked to me like that could make a pretty interesting shot. Uh, there's a lot of character, right? But I, but I like it. Um, can I get that seven points? Okay, one more. Even though I already gave away the name. This is shiny, correct? Yes. Uh, all right. A Chinatown is, this is capturing, for me, it captured about a 1930s type of feeling, especially because of these uh, wall uh, advertisements. And that in itself, I thought was really, really cool. Then the, the, the guy didn't distract from it. He added a lot, but I give this eight points. That's it, everybody. Thank you again, Bob. Bob. Great comments, Bob. Thank you. I think we're done. Thank you, everybody. Then I don't need to give me Oh. <laughs> Um, stop you there. That's what I need. Thank you. Can I just click on you. Can I show the waiting? I don't know how to do it. Not okay. Here, wait. I should be able to do this. Just replaying the host. Okay, you got it. Oh, good. I can ask Marianne. Where did you go?